What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we have a tier list on all of the DPS going into Dragonflight. Okay, this is based on my personal experience from playing a buttload of beta, buttload of beta. Um, as a healer primarily, I did play some of these DPS here and there, but just kind of from my perspective, what has been performing well, um, I pretty much have insight on every single one at this point. Some of them maybe a little bit less than others, but uh, just kind of what I've seen, and this seems like a general consensus based on a lot of you know other streamers and other people making tier lists. So I just want to get, provide you guys my opinion and my input on this same topic. So let's get right into it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and let's get to it. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this short of content. And let's get to this. So Frosty K. Frosty K, I would I could argue this is either a high B or a low A tier, okay? It still has incredible damage. Um, like it feel like it happens every season. It just gets overshadowed by Unholy. Just because they have a lot of the same toolkit now. Unholy has now has the the blind as well. Um, they have able they both have a bomb limb um, and they both pretty much do the same thing one unholy just has an extra kick and like a slow and a pet and all that kind of stuff um, and a little bit better like sustained damage where dk frosty k still has incredible bursts so i kind of would put them hand in hand i think they're both like solid a tier like they're pretty damn good um moving on to next we got the demon hunter demon hunter is a no-brainer s tier i don't think anyone has any questions about this please nerf this class um that's about it it's the best healing best damage sustained damage kills everything it's just it's a nightmare to play against pretty uh pretty i know you guys are pretty shocked about that one um balance i'm gonna put it at a low b tier i think some compositions are gonna excel with it like boomy dh boomy aflock maybe even boomy um like ellie maybe or boomy shadow priest but i don't know if they're gonna be that good but i think like specifically i'm thinking of boomy dh and boomy um uh, warlock i think they're both gonna be pretty solid comps um so for that reason i'm gonna keep them at a b tier they do are just kind of heavy pad damage right now um and they kept getting nerfed over and over i don't know where they're gonna stand but i keep it as a low b tier just because it does have some viability to that feral i'm gonna put feral as an a tier potentially higher than dk just to clarify again this this tier list is kind of an i'm gonna gear this towards overall pvp uh, twos threes just overall because solo shuffle is so fucked up right now like you if you guys saw my my last video just me bitching about dampening and solo shuffle everything's just like the more dampening just promotes super zug gameplay and it kind of skews a lot of like these classes that are based on cc um and twos and threes are not as bad as that so i'm gonna keep this in general because the ferals have been getting their butt whooped in, in some of these solo shovels that i've seen but it's because like it's like two warlocks and a shadow priest and then one feral and he just gets destroyed um so but i think feral in a, in a coordinated setup like a jungle or whatever it may be feral shadow priest feral lock i think it's going to be really solid in 1v1 and like bgs and all that kind of stuff super solid pick i think um devastation i'm gonna put it as a high a low a tier i think especially going into dragonflight in the beginning it's gonna be better than it's going to be because don't people don't understand how to play into it um but as you get used to it it's very heavy on just super freaking cleave man sneeze cleave i like to call multiple dhs or sorry devastations um and it can do a lot of damage but it is definitely killable very very killable but the damage is high and unfortunately that's the biggest thing that matters right now is if you do a lot of damage so and it still has it's like one shot fire breath which really should get nerfed to be honest um we'll see what happens with that though so i definitely should put it as a low a bm hunter i'm gonna put it as a b tier probably better than boomy here um it does do a very high sustain and has the opportunity to do traps in a solo shuffle environment, it's kind of meh because you're not really coordinated. I think it's going to just do just fine in a you know scenario with jungle um, or just coordinated threes or twos action. Survival Hunter, I'm going to put right there with BM Hunter. Survival Hunter is definitely underestimated right now. I think it's going to be a force in twos um, with dampening you know being the way it is. And they have, their sustained damage is really, really good. Um, it, they... they you know you don't see a lot of this in on the beta unfortunately because in three solo shuffle it's very caster dominant it seems like it's either casters or it's dhs and dks where everyone's just zugging and survival hunters are not a zug class they need a trap they need to kite um they need to do their do their thing and because of that so they kind of suffer in solo shuffle that's why i'll probably put them on a b if this was a 2v2 tier list they're they're borderline s they'd be high a borderline s tier i think uh, but because of that reason, I'm actually going to put them a little higher. They were doing, they were crunching, man. Some of these DHs or survival hunters. I keep saying DH, man. I hate them so much. Mark Hunter, we're going to put it at the C tier. C tier, it's just not as good as these two. Other hunter specs, it still has the opportunity to trap and do all sorts of things like that. But I do not think it's on the same level as those other guys. 
Arcane Mage, I could, I'm going to argue at a high A tier or a low A tier. Probably better than Devastation just because of the opportunity to be able to CC better than a uh, Devastation. Again, I think, you know, if the meta stays super fast and just zuggy, you know, Arcane won't be as good. I think Devastation will do better. But especially in twos and in coordinated threes, I think Arcane Mage is going to do pretty well. Um, we'll see how that turns out. Fire Mage, I do like... Uh, I think overall we'll go with a D. I think a good Fire Mage, you could definitely argue is C tier. Um, I was playing against Aegis playing Fire Mage and he was actually doing in like a, in like a, not a, um, you know, like a setup base comp, but playing like Mage Lock and just doing ring, fat Ring of Fires and just, you know, just padding damn. Like it really wasn't too bad. Um, I, I feel like in that case, it's actually not a D tier, but we'll keep it as in overall, we'll keep it as a D tier. I think Frost is probably in a similar boat, maybe a little bit better than Fire. You know, damage is not that great. You, you're, you know, you don't do well in the Zug meta with the H's and DK's and Ferals all up on you. Um, so it's kind of tough in that. I think overall, it's just going to be mad. I think it might have, you're still going to, Mage Lock is still going to be good for Frost Mage. But outside of Frost Mage, uh, Warlock, I don't know what comps are actually going to do well at all with Frost still. Um, Cage Goblin, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, be out there. I'm going to put Windwalker at a C tier. Um, I think these two, these changes that have happened have really fucked over Windwalkers. First, they had the, the, the HP pool increase, um, that, you know, indirectly nerfed burst. And then on top of that, they nerfed their burst a lot. Um, and I think they, for that reason, I have not seen any Windwalkers doing well on the beta. So I'm going to keep it as a C tier. I think it still has the opportunity. Probably in twos, it's probably still going to do well. Maybe Windwalker DK will do well just because you have that leg sweep to, you know, to add in with like the DK setups. Maybe like Frost DK, Windwalker might be solid. Um, but we sh shall see. Windwalker, I feel like there's no, no point in playing Windwalker DH. You might as well just play DH DK at that point. Um, Retribution Paladin, I'm going to put that at a uh, B tier as well. Uh, probably below Boomy or above Boomy. Kind of in a similar boat to Shadowlands. Can do a lot of crazy burst, but um, it can do healing. But with the dampening being up really high in solo shuffle and like some of these other comps, you know, you lose a little bit of value of the of the Red Paladin because you know a big benefit of it in Shadowlands is that it can do a lot of healing on top of everything else. So it kind of you know makes up for like the lack of you know getting a uh, lack of high sustain. Um, still can one shot you though for sure with uh, Divine Toll. Shadow Priest, I am going to put Shadow Priest at a... Uh, in organized combat... Organized combat, that sounds fucking nerdy as hell. In organized games like 3v3, I think, I, I think there's an argument for Shadow Priest being an S tier class. Um, the dots actually do damage now. Um, and you still have all those crazy CCs, especially in solo shuffle. This, But, you know, we're going to put it as a high... We're going to put it as a high, uh, high A tier here. I think that's fair. Um, you know, the same thing is kind of going on. Asa Rogue, I'm going to put Asa Rogue. I'm going to put it... Uh, dude, I don't even know if it's an A tier, man. Uh, I'm going to put it as a... I'll, I'll put it as a low A tier, because I, I think I'm going to put the other ones down here. I think it's a low A tier. I think the thing that's going to, you know, keep it boosted up is obviously Kidney Shot, and then just having an MS consistent, like, hemotoxin effect and whatnot. The damage is okay. I think you're going to have to probably go the route of playing with, like, an Affliction Lock or a Shadow Priest and doing a lot of cleave damage. I think that's probably going to be the, you know, the role of it. Rogue Mage, I don't know, dude. Asa Arcane are the two best Mage and Rogue Specs, but they don't really synergize well together, so... We'll see how that plays out, but I'm going to put it as an A tier overall, just because, it, it you know, in a two, I think in twos and in... Uh, and like in certain threes comps, it's gonna do just fine. Outlaw Rogue, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue put Outlaw Rogue down at a C tier. They seem like they just don't like their biggest strength was having the sh you know the uh, the gouge which every spec has now, and then having uh, their high, really high sustain. But their high sustain definitely kind of fell off. You don't really see that as crazy. But maybe things will change in a, in a two v two scenario. You could probably argue this is higher. Uh, but I'm gonna go with overall. We're gonna keep it as a C tier as well. It could definitely be a B, man. I feel like we don't see enough outlaws to really get a good judgment over that. Um, sub rogue. Uh, if we're going overall PvP, I'm gonna put it as a B tier because I think it's gonna be it's still gonna be good in twos, threes. I don't think sub's gonna be very good at all. Um, uh, but I I think sub was definitely be able to still you know punch through with uh I think it's just like why play sub but you can play Asa in threes. I think in twos maybe rogue mage is good with it. We'll find out. Um, but it's kind of a tough spot to put these rogues. I feel like they should probably be on the same level, to be honest. Maybe we put these together. Ellie Shaman, 
I'm definitely gonna put that as an A tier, man. Ellie Shaman, they, they got some recent buffs, man. But in between the DKs, they had some recent buffs to Lava Burst, like 20% or something like that, to Flame Shock and Lava Burst, and they're actually juicing right now. I got hit by one Lava Burst, one cast. It overloaded five, a total of five hits, so four times overload. They were all 45k. You know, that's almost 200k damage in one button. That's an enormous amount of damage. And, you know, all the modifiers and stuff going in. And even Urshock. Urshock was hitting almost 200k. Ellie Blast is still hitting up there. I think Ellie is definitely going to be a solid pick. Um, I want to put Turbo or, or Enhance at a bottom, at a pretty low B tier here. The only reason I'd put it above like a Windwalker Outlaw Rogue scenario is that you could still one-shot people with like your Ellie Blast and like catch people off guards and poof, pop them. Comp scenario, you know, if you're thinking about compositions, it's going to be kind of in the same boat as it's been in Jada Lens and every other expansion, it seems like, where they pretty much just only play with, like, Warriors, Fury Warriors. Maybe you could play with, a, like, a Rogue, an Acerogue randomly, or, like, an uh, even a D, maybe a DH. I don't know. But the dampening, the, the dampening is, like, same story as Rhett. Dampening is going to hurt them a bit. Uh, because you're not able to, you know, keep yourself up with all those off heals as much and you lose value as a class because you were, you know, people, they, they really excelled by taking enhance because they were able to keep themselves up. Um, no brainer, Aflock, S tier, you know, we're just going to go right there. We'll put those, both those bad boys together here. Demo is arguably better than, I think Demo is arguably better than uh, Aflock in some comps too. Demo is extremely hard to heal into. When they get there when if, if you let them cast like especially during nether portal which is like an uh, ability that they weren't really taking in the past but now they are um it's a three minute cooldown where they just crank pets it is enormous damage and then still having you know coil fear uh stun double axe toss stun it's a lot like <laughs> it is really difficult i think shadow play is going to be a very phenomenal comp uh demo dk as well i think those are going to be two s tier compositions going into dragonflight so i think for that reason we're going to keep it up there aflock damage those nerfs meant nothing man i thought they would they are still juicing people so definitely still an s tier and they still have a lot of healing um destro lock we're going to put it as a high b tier it's still a warlock still have a lot of healing survivability still have pretty good damage but it's just not there with that with uh with some of these other classes i think i don't think it's on par with uh some of these other casters above it uh arms warrior i'm gonna put it down here as a d tier man uh arms warrior is just it's just not there man they die they the biggest thing is they die our damage is okay it's just still not better than fury fury has a better ms it's better healing better damage overall so and then dude every most of these warriors I come into contact with right now, they just they get to fucking run over, man. It's kind of sad. Uh, but come, coming from like such a dominant class in the in middle of the Shadowlands, at least. Um, Fury Warrior, I feel like I'm going to put it at a high B tier. Potentially argue a low A. I think because of the dampening changes, especially in Solo Shuffle, you might see Fury Warriors do pretty well. And same with twos with dampening ramping faster. I think Fear Warrior is definitely going to be up there, but I think overall it's probably probably a middle of the pack spec. I, don't, I think DK and DH are clearly better than them. Uh, it's like makes me want to question Acerogue too. We'll leave it. We'll just stick with what we had there. Um, is there any other DPS I'm missing here? No, there's not. Okay, so that is actually all the classes. I said good. 13 minutes. It's actually not too bad. I wanted to keep this quick and short to the spot in case you guys were wondering about something, what classes to pick up for yourself. Um, so that's about it. Um, that's kind of my quick input on it. Feel free to disagree or in like you know add in any of your input that you guys think. But I think this is a pretty pretty accurate. Uh, you know, there's probably some outliers here and there, and then definitely some you know maybe twos and threes. It might vary a little bit, but overall, I think these are pretty good picks. Um, as for the healers, you guys saw my previous video. If you guys are interested in that, it, dude, Evoker is just above everybody. It's just not even close right now with all these dampening changes. So that's if you were interested in my update on that. But uh, that's all we got for today. Um, hope you guys enjoy and leave a comment if you guys have any questions about any of these classes or you've, you know you want to add in your opinion. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.